Hello, my name is Chris Gruber, and welcome to another session of the eDocs training series. Today I'll be showing you eDocs RM extensions, part of our RM University series. This video is a tutorial of eDocs RM extensions, the client side feature of our records management software. This tutorial is designed for intermediate and experienced eDocs users who wish to learn the portions of extensions specifically using RM functionality. Let's take a look at what we're going to cover. First, we'll discuss what RM is and the terminology associated with it. Often the most difficult part of learning RM is simply understanding what everything means. Next, we'll go over what we can do in RM extensions from profiling documents to changing file parts and declaring records. And finally, we'll cover more advanced features such as disposal, suspending and superseding of records, and more. RM, it gets the job done. Keep in mind your organization may have different terminology for individual items since the ability to customize the RM terminology is a feature of eDocs. Ready? Excellent. Let's begin. Let's make sure we're familiar with the concept of a file plan. We already know how files and folders work in real life. A piece of paper is placed in a folder, the folder is placed in a hanging folder, the hanging folder is placed in a file cabinet, and so on. Since RM was originally meant to catalog and track physical items, it uses the same terminology based on those items. Think of a record as that piece of paper, of a file part as that folder, of a file as that hanging folder, of a term as the drawer of a filing cabinet, of a file plan as the entire filing cabinet. A file plan is just a structured way of organizing files, documents, and records. For example, the file plan might have a top-level term called property management. This could cover a wide range of activities, represented by the narrower terms below it, such as acquisition, cases, committees, and so on. Each of these terms could have narrower terms below them. Users then assign documents to the relevant part. Remember, the file plan is not part of the document management side of eDocs. It is specific to RM. As an eDocs document management user, you're already aware that a document profile contains summary information about the document, such as author, document type, or document name. This metadata forms the basis of any search you do on the document. RM modifies the default document profiles to add file-related fields. With these, you can file a document and see other information about the file holding it. RM includes three different areas of security. Term, functional, and document. Document security is the only one of these which concerns us on the client side, and it's basically the same as standard eDocs document access. For each document, specific users and groups can be added to the trustees list and granted or denied rights to the document. RM Extensions helps manage movement of physical items from their storage locations to users. A user can submit a request for an item in Extensions. When they do so, all other requests for the item display to help avoid a conflict. If there is a conflict, the user could either modify their request or simply log it as it is. The records admin handles conflicts. In addition, extensions can be used to lend an item from one user to another without first having to return the item to storage. For example, if Aaron requests an item that Alex has already borrowed, Alex can lend it directly to Aaron. When this is done, Alex uses extensions to update the item. Now that we have the basics of what RM is and what its main components are, let's start using RM extensions. The file plan shows up in Explorer and Outlook if eDocs extensions is installed and you're given access. From here you can, among other things, browse the file plan, categorize or recategorize a document, or import documents by drag and drop. There are various RM functions in eDocs extensions, most of which we cover in this video. If any RM menu items are missing or disabled, you might not have rights to those specific functions. Contact your admin if you should have these rights. To browse the file plan, expand the library to show file plan, quick searches, and folders. To declare a document a record, highlight the item you want to declare. Select Document Declare Record. In the confirmation dialog, click Yes. Depending on the configuration, to be declared a record, the document must be assigned to a file part. If it isn't, you'll be prompted to select one. To categorize a document, drag and drop it from the right pane onto an open file part. The profile shows with the new file code and category. To import a document by drag and drop, drag a file from the desktop or explorer and drop it onto an open file part. Enter or look up a valid file code. 
The file code lookup lets you search by recently used files, group favorites, or browse the file plan. Recently used files opens a quick retrieve of open parts that you have recently accessed. Group favorites opens a quick retrieve of all open file parts in your primary group's favorites, which is set by your admin. File plan opens the file plan explorer, which is used for browsing or searching the file plan when selecting a file for the profile. Click the file part, then click Explorer, select file. To search, click Edit, Search File Plan. Enter search criteria, then select or clear checkboxes to limit the parameters. You must select terms, file names, or both to get results. Click OK. To select a file from results, right-click it, then click Select File. To jump to an item, right-click it, then click Go to Item in Tree. The document profile forms are used for entering or displaying profile information, just like the original eDocs forms, but with added fields for specifying the file part. Change file part moves a document to another part. To do so, select a document, then click Document, Records, Change File Part. Enter or look up a file part number. Find and select the new part, click Explorer, select File, then click OK. Documents vital to the operation of the organization should be marked vital to help avoid accidental modification or removal and help identify top priorities during backup and archiving. From Quick Retrieve, you can change the vital status of a document. To do so, select the document, then click Document, Records, Change Vital Status. The vital status immediately changes. Because most documents have a limited useful lifetime, those documents marked as vital right now may not be vital later. To set a date for reviewing a document's vital status, select the document, then click Document, Records, Change Vital Review Date. Enter the new date for review or click the arrow to select from a calendar. If your organization allows it, document level disposal actions can be created and applied to individual documents. An admin can then manage these through disposal processing. To assign document disposal instructions, select one or more documents, then click Document, Records, Assign Disposal Instructions. Enter a new disposal action, look up a document level action, and if required, enter a new disposal authority, look up an authority, then click Save Changes. To remove disposal instructions from a document, select it, then click Document, Records, Assign Disposal Instructions then click Remove Disposal Instructions, then click OK. The Assigned Disposal Instructions form opens when you click Disposal Instructions in a hit list, and that's where disposal actions for individual documents are assigned or removed. RM installs an updated profile search form that includes RM-specific fields. From a hit list, you can select a document, open a new search window, or narrow, expand, or save your search, just like in eDocs Document Management. When you select items, you can use the Document Records menu to access RM functions like Request or Put in Box. We'll be covering some of these in the next section. You can request items for a certain date or range. To do so, select items in a hit list, then click Document, Records, Request. Confirm the same information for all the items if you chose more than one. After entering the info, click OK. Now perhaps you no longer need items after you've requested them. In order to cancel a request, select the items and click Document, Records, Cancel Request. Select the specific request, then click Cancel Request. In general, when a user finishes with the borrowed item, that item is returned. There may be times when this is inefficient. Perhaps you borrowed an item and you know a colleague needs it when you're done. And instead of returning the item, so the admin could just lend it to your colleague, why not lend it to your colleague directly? When you do this, select the items in a hit list, then click Documents, Records, Loan. If you selected multiple items, you're asked if you want to apply the same parameters to all. To continue, click Yes. To cancel and apply different parameters to each, say No to this. Fill in required fields, then click OK. You can now lend the items to the new borrower. The return function changes an item's history to reflect that it was returned. To return an item, select it, then click Documents, Records, Return, then click Yes. If any selected item isn't borrowed, an error will display. Click Cancel. This only cancels the current item. Other items are processed. 
Returning a file part also indicates all paper documents associated with it are returned, except those that may be borrowed individually. When file parts are created, they are in an open, active state. And when we're finished with the file part, we can close it, preserving it as is. Closed items within the file plan can be viewed by clicking View, Show Closed Items. If you select this, you'll have to log out of and back into extensions in order for the setting to take effect. Now only certain users have access to menu items allowing them to close or reopen file parts within extensions. If you are not one of those users, this next section does not apply to you. In general, a file part should be open only as long as documents are being added to it. When a new part is created in a file, the existing part in that file closes. Usually, this is how to close parts. The only exceptions are if you want to close the current part without creating a new one, or if you want to close a reopened part. To close a file part, select the part, then click Document, Records, Close File Part. If you selected the last part of a file, the file also closes. Reopening a file part is usually only needed to add new documents to an already closed part. To reopen a file part, select the closed part, then click Document, Records, Reopen File Part. The file part is now open and active. When you finish with a reopen file part, you should reclose it as soon as possible. Search results can contain any type of RM item. The item search also lets you search for specific types of items. File parts and boxes contain other items. Parts contain documents. Boxes contain parts. To view box or file part contents, select the item in search results, then click Document, Records, Contents. If it's a box, you won't see the individual documents in the file parts. Suspending a file prevents its disposition. When you suspend an item in a file part, the suspension applies to the entire part. Everything in the part is suspended until released. To suspend an item, select it, then click Document, Records, Suspend. You can release suspended items through the same interface. File parts are usually put in boxes for transfer to other locations or disposal. To indicate a file was put in a box, select the part in a hit list, then click Document, Records, Put in Box. Enter or look up the box code. Select the box, click OK, then click OK again. To remove a part from a box, select it, then click Document, Records, Remove from Box. Enter or look up a location, select a location, Click OK, then click OK one last time. Maybe you intend to replace an older document with a newer one. In this case, you can supersede it. Documents are normally disposed with the part they're in. Superseded documents aren't. If a document is superseded and disposal settings on the server are set accordingly, the document can then be disposed. To supersede, select the document you wish to supersede, then click Document, Records, Supersede. Select the superseding document, the one you want to be in place. Change the search criteria if necessary, then click OK. Exporting metadata creates a tab-delimited text file with profile information for that RM item. If you export an electronic document, it's exported in its native file format as well. To export items with metadata, select them, then click Document, Records, Export with Metadata. Browse to the output directory and click OK. This has been eDocs RM Extensions. For further information, we encourage you to review the RM Extensions User Guide. And if you'd like to learn more about eDocs RM, visit our YouTube channel for other RM University videos, as well as the rest of the eDocs training series. Did you like this video? Do you want to see more like it? Do you have ideas for other videos? Join the discussion on the eDocs DM forum in the Open Text Knowledge Center. Feel free to contact support if you need any further assistance. We'd be happy to help. And thank you for taking time to watch this video. We hope you found it useful and that you'll be back for more in the eDocs training series.